good afternoon to all of you. Uh, yesterday we did a little bit of uh, introduction. I believe everyone can hear me, Mr. Muhammad. Yes, yes, everybody can hear you, madam. Kila mtu anakusikia vizuri. There is only a problem with uh, one of our students and I'm going to sort it out. Okay, thank you. So, uh, learners, uh, today I will uh, move on with uh, from what we did there. So yesterday we did an introduction, a very nice introduction of a doll's house. We touched on a few things that we are supposed to discuss, okay? So I touched on a few characters, who was, uh, which were Nora. I touched on a few things, which was um, uh, gender, gender, and uh, we also touched on um, uh, family issues. And again, we also touched on figurative language, that is uh, stylistic devices that have been used in that book. So today, for those who are writing, we are going to do three more things apart from the introduction. And we'll be doing um, uh, about the author, something about the author, we will look into it. And also, apart from the author, we will also be doing about uh, the classification of the play itself, which journal of literature can we classify? It? That is the second subtopic that we will discuss today. And then the third one, we will thoroughly discuss the title, A Doll's House. And if such a question will come in the exam, exactly how would we discuss it, okay? And how we place it. So number one, about the author, that is Henry, Henrik Ibsen. Number two, journal, journal of literature. Another word or another meaning of a journal of literature is under what form of literature do we classify the play? A doll's house. And then number three, it's going to be about the title. How symbolic is it? Yes, it is a stylistic device uh, bringing out symbolism, but how do we apply it? How does it come out? And how would we discuss it in any exam? Now, up to that point, we go back to the beginning about the order. Now, one thing that you will uh, discover about, uh, uh, let's say, writers, yeah? For those who are going to be writers in future is that probably half of them always turn out mad because they will always concentrate on writing too much yeah and that is the same case with Henrik Ibsen. Now Henrik at some point um, suffers from stroke something that is always caused by depression some are genetic but in his case he became so so immersed in his writing that his family life became a total failure. If you look at other writers, you'll discover that that's the same trend. They become so immersed into writing that at some point, they really can't balance between their working and also their family life. So they end up becoming frustrated because everyone is rejecting them. Now, Henry Kibsen, he was born into a very, very wealthy family. And um, he had good teachers, good, um, good upbringing up to the age of eight years and then uh when he was eight years his father because you know business is tricky yeah? his father was a very good businessman so at some point he he lost all his businesses because of very bad deals and also bad business and uh henry had to like um fall from grace from being a, a prince to being a very poor man uh, and uh, they had to struggle through everything, look for food, look for everything. So in 19, uh, in 1828, just like I told you, he's a writer that was in the 1850s. In 1828, Henrik was born in Norway. Uh, he was the second born in a family of five people, uh, five kids. So five uh, plus two, that's a family of seven, a nuclear family. And um, because of, uh, again, the shift of life when his father lost all his businesses and he had nothing else to do, he, start, he became so immersed in books and that's how he began his writing career at uh, right between the age of seven, eight to 10, okay? Now, after that, um, at the age of 30,
And if you look at his history, because most of you are Google about Henrik at, by the end of the day, you will discover that um, his first play did not make it, but the other few that he wrote were very successful. And as a result, he became very famous, okay? Now, there were a few, I've written around three, the Feast of Sulhan, Sulhan, Olaf. It is also in your uh, notes, the notes that I sent you on Adolf's house, and the Viking of uh, Hel Gerard. So that is in 1856, 1857, for those who are writing, and 1858. That's when he was able to publish these books. So it looks like uh, he was a very good writer. For a person to make sure that he publishes books at that uh, rate, it looks like the only thing that he was interested in is uh, writing and publishing. Now, to top it all up, he married at the age of 30. He had one child, but two years later, that is when he started suffering from stroke. And um, after some time, several strokes, he, he died. Yeah. Okay, he died, but his name still lives until today. And that is something I believe we can also learn from that, because maybe a question might come. What do you learn from Henry as the author? You can talk of his patience, his zeal, his passion about writing. And uh, you can also relate uh, with, um, just like we said yesterday, he was able to give us real, uh, realistic uh, literature, give us realistic tragedy something that we can relate with, something that we have already uh, seen even uh, in our day-to-day -day life. As much as we do not, um, we are not from the 19th century, we are able to relate with the problems that um, Henry was able to uh, bring out in his literature, okay? So that is all about um, the author. He lived from 1828, for those who are writing, to 1900, and um, he died on May uh, 23rd. That is 1906, at the age of 80, okay? 1900, that's when his health could no longer take uh, anymore. Uh, his body could not take it anymore, and so he was rendered helpless and could not write anymore. So if you have any question, you're going to ask at the last five minutes, I'm going to continue with the second, the second uh, topic, that is uh, the journal of literature. Now, literature is divided into very, very, very many categories. Uh, we have the oral literature part and we have the written literature. And uh, written literature, for those who are writing, we have plays, we have novels, and we have short stories, okay? Now, we have done the novel, uh, Blossoms, short stories, we have memories we lost, which you're not doing. But we have two plays. We have um, Inheritance and we have uh, Adult House. So for you guys, you are doing Adult House and one more novel, The, uh, the Pearl. So if we were to discuss of Jonah, uh, don't uh, fear the word. Jonah is like a, just a, a, a normal way of saying there are forms of literature, classifications of literature, okay? So under a play, we have again other subdivisions, okay? And so we are going to look at uh, this journal of literature, which is a doll's house. A doll's house can be classified into two, okay? And the journals of literature. It is, uh, let's say, uh, from journal, we say it's a play, okay? So we classify it as a play. But under a play, we have uh, two of them, which we can say it's a family drama, that is one. It's also a drama, a play, that is a drama, a family drama. At the beginning, I believe yesterday as I was introducing the lesson, yeah, uh, we discussed um, how uh, the novel or the play has been acted in the same scene, okay? Where we have Act 1 is in uh, the living room, Act 2 is still in the living room, and Act 3 is still in the living room. And the title itself even connects to the book itself, okay? It discusses how uh, we have um, Helma and Nora, how it's their house and everything that happens in their house and how they, they relate to it, okay? Now, in uh, the family drama, you see a little bit of antagonism, conflict, yeah? 
which they really can't see it, but we as readers initially at the beginning, we can even feel the tension, okay? At some point, we confuse it with love, but it's not um, love at, as it might be seen because Nora has uh, internal conflict. She's uh, unable to decide um, whether this is love or whether I'm being treated like a doll and so forth, okay? And so she tries her best, okay? I'll not go back to that because I already did that yesterday. So family drama. Uh, we need to realize or we need to note that players, for those who are writing, I'll never realize until they are staged on, are staged on a platform. And that is why some people might uh, ask this question, yeah? How, how comes a teacher, we normally say that players are um, classified and uh, written literature, and yet uh, our plays are only supposed to be presented on a stage for people to realize exactly how oh, the, the true meaning of the play. But again, remember when it is presented to you, it is under, uh, it is written. You have to actualize it so that people can act and you can watch, okay? And so you really have to be very careful when you're, you're dealing with plays because there is action, parenthesis, and uh, we have the words from the characters and we have the different characters and their different personalities, okay? So in real sense, it is acted and it can only be realized through that. And that is why eventually after you're done reading, you have to go and uh, watch the play and get a feeling of exactly how it is, okay? Now, uh, another way, another one, the first part, the sub first subdivision under the Journal of Literature was that it is classified under, under family drama. But again, it is also under uh, drama, but again, the second point, it is modern day tragedy, okay? That one cannot just be a form of literature, but also it can also serve as a very good thing. Modern day tragedy, okay? So we have number one, and uh, that is under Journal of Literature, number one, family drama, and then I'm, I'm discussing the second one, modern day tragedy, okay? Now, just like uh, I said, it, it can also serve as a theme, an issue that is discussed, it focuses on the trials and tribu uh, tribulations that face women in a patriarchal society. I'm very sure that Abdul Basil, uh, you'll disagree with me, but uh, this is a fact that we can clearly see in the, in the book, okay? And um, women in a patriarchal society, you look at Nora's case, yeah? Modern day tragedy. She was not able to make a few decisions, like uh, taking loans from a bank, okay? Uh, as a woman, we have the right to take loans, yeah? But uh, I'll give you a personal experience now as a woman. And uh, if you go to the bank, the first thing they will ask for, they do believe strongly that women do not even have assets. So they are going to ask for, for uh, what do you say? Something that is going to prove to them that you can actually pay pay the, the loan. But you look at how men are, are treated, yeah? And uh, when they are applying for the loans, like uh, they, are, they are really go so fast and they are processed quite fast compared to as women. Now that is a tragedy in modern day life, but uh, I wouldn't say it is as, as strong as what Nora had to go through because she did not even go to a bank. She just went to Krogstad and remember Krogstad was an extortionist, okay? So she winds up in the hands of Crockstad and doesn't know, doesn't even have any idea that he will eventually take advantage of her, okay? So she is in trouble, but um, uh, she does get the loan and Crockstad uses that eventually to, um, he eventually uses that to blackmail her, which is again, quite unheard of, okay? So, we have uh, that uh, journal of literature that can be seen in the, in the play. It explores the status of women, how they are victims of social forces, to the extent that they are with the role of, uh, they find themselves uh, 
or uh, they they are they assume the role of a doll just like Nora. Okay, so they become dolls who which can be uh, told to do anything and uh, groomed anyhow and have no say in that. Okay, now apart from that, uh, the same same uh, journal of literature that is modern day tragedy brings out the gender roles. Okay, so when you're going to be discussing in these uh, journals of literature but remember this question will never come uh, directly in the exam like a classify several journals that are found in the book no 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 you'll be given a question and then from those questions uh, that question you will be in a position to remember everything that you have learned okay so if you look at a uh, modern day tragedy you look at uh, general so that one will never 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 be avoided because Helma has got his own gender roles. Nora has got her own gender roles. And then we have um, other characters, Mrs. Linde, Krogstad, we had uh, the nurse, we had, uh, there was this, um, the maid, yes, and we had the children. However, we do not even know the gender of the, the kids because they are really not affected, okay? Their role is just being children of Helma and Nora. Now, the gender roles of uh, the characters, one of the protagonists, who is Nora, has been highly brought out. And uh, we, are we see that uh, Nora and other characters are brought out, are trapped in a society defined by restrictive gender roles. That is one thing that uh, we see all through and something that uh, really uh, guides and uh, not even guys, actually really messes up with her because eventually she has to leave her family just because the society has set up rules and regulations of how she should live and uh, she's really not okay with that, okay? Now, the that was the first one on a family drama and the journals of literature, modern day tragedy, the second one. And then we have the third one. So they are only three. And that one um, is uh, like the second, the, the, let's say the final one, and the one that is realized, okay? Now, this third one, a realistic, uh, realist drama. Realist drama, what do I mean by that? Now, at some point, we say that we can relate with what a doll's house is all about. Because even in our day-to-day -day life, we still experience things that were actually experienced back then, okay? Some people are, um, again, uh, brought up so that they can, um, for sure, yeah? Like, um, you see parents, and uh, I want you to have a very open, uh, open mind on this. You see parents, at some point, um, telling, uh, telling you what to do, or let's say other people, not just you, because you are more than the children, we have some children whose life is defined since from when they are born until when they are quite old. And the father or the mother probably has a say in that, okay? The same thing happens to Nora. Remember, she did not even choose Nora as her husband. He was uh, chosen by the father. And then she realizes that actually, you know what, both of you are the same. So when it comes to realist drama, in such a genre, character, uh character talk talk uh, that, that is in close in a close approximation of everyday speech mm -hmm. the speeches are straightforward conversational and concerned with the normal everyday things i'm going to repeat that in such a genre characters talk in a close approximation of everyday speech okay and um, I believe that is in uh, your book. And uh, we see that Mrs. Linde at some point, yeah? At some point, he get, she gets to, uh, at some point she gets to discuss, yeah? And uh, she gets to discuss with Nora. And uh, one of the things that, Uh, so sorry for that. Uh, 
and uh, I'm still a mom, I'm going to repeat that. In such a journal, characters talk in a cross approximation of everyday speech. The speeches are straightforward, okay? And uh, conversational and concerned with normal everyday things. So one of the things that um, I would like to relate with, like uh, for example, I was at a very good example of Mrs. Linda and Nora, and they were both discussing at some point on how she's so concerned, so scared, like Nora, where did you get the money, okay, to fund your trip to Italy with the travels? And so she realizes that Dr. Rank and Nora have a very close relationship. So uh, she's driven to think that Nora is having an affair with Dr. Rank. These are things that actually happen in normal day life. We see young girls, married women, and uh, probably uh, ladies, uh, proper ladies, okay? because of financial uh, instabilities, they end up having affairs. And um, if you look at that conversation, it's quite similar to a normal conversation that two friends would have over the same issue. So that is realist drama, which is also under uh, journals of literature that are uh, realized in this play. Okay. Now, the last one, I know the list, is the title. Yesterday I went through this, today I'm going to go deep in this, and I want you to read it, what you have um, heard about it, or um, what you have read versus what you have understood about it in the story, okay? Now, before Nora leaves her husband, she tells him their house, the house has been nothing but a playroom. What is she trying to say? That Torvald was treating her like a craving, okay? And her experiences, especially up to this point, okay, were not as um, what she expected in terms of marriage, in terms of companionship and so forth, okay? Remember, Nora was a Christian, Torvald too was a Christian. They also believed in what they have been taught, okay? In, um, in church. In other words, that is an explanation on the truth, Torvald has never treated Nora, Nora as anything more than a prey thing. He admires her beauty, gets her to dance with him. I remember you saw that, and you were, most of you were even asking um, from the video that, um, why are they dancing that way? That, that is a very weird style. Yeah? And uh, I remember telling you, you know, this, this, uh, this movie is not of uh, the 21st century. It is from all the way to the 19th century. And exactly the way they are dancing, that's the way they were supposed to dance. You also saw it when we went to Pangani, uh, how the dance was being done. Okay, it was a bit exaggerated, but at least they tried, okay? Now, he admires her beauty. That's good. It's the, exactly as it is, okay? Gets her to dance for him. Dresses her up in costume. She is his doll, okay? And Torvald, again, he's not even bothered by that because uh, we had, uh, we could see these words, the use of Skylark, we had the use of um, another one uh, that he would call him, call her, uh, was, uh, oh, from Skylark it was, oh, squirrel, there it is, okay? A very weird animal to call somebody despite being very small. Yeah? So to him, uh, she is his doll to play with. The marriage is all for sure. And that is a statement that I had already said at the beginning. She goes further and says, at home, I was Papa's doll child. So you can see there is a link between uh, Helma and uh, Torvald, that is the Nora's current husband and uh, the father, how they used to treat him. Then she, that is in page 112, for those who have the book, yeah it is, and I'm uh, going to look at that, see whether it's still the same, same thing, page 112, see whether she does really say that, it is in your notes, you'll have a look at that. Now, in your notebook, all the way to from uh, the first page to page two, three, four, five, six, 
from the guidebook that uh, was sent to you, have a look at all that, they all appear there. And you will see that being shown there. So in page 112, it is here. I can see that Helma and Nora are having a conversation. It is just after Helma had uh, realized that Nora had uh, done something quite bad, okay? And uh, they are uh, really arguing about that. And Nora is uh, bringing out so much information. And Helma, I can see his surprise. He talks of uh, his surprise there. Yeah? One of the feelings and emotions that can easily be seen in that, okay? Now, you have, um, up to that point, uh, no wonder the play is entitled A Doll's House because of Nora. Now, uh, before I, I read that, I will go back to that. She goes further and says, at home, I was Papa's doll child. She has never been anything but a man pleasing, okay? And uh, so we finish that point by talking of no wonder the play is entitled A Doll's House. So if a question was to come and uh, you are asked, like I have a few questions here, and um, we have one that directly uh, relates with um, the title, relationships are born to disintegrate. So those ones who are writing, this is the question, and I would like you to look at it uh, by the end of the lesson. Go through your uh, book, Adult's House, and uh, see whether you can even attempt this question, okay? So here's the quote. Um, the word that I can see you are uh, seated, very comfortable, not even writing. So I want you to write this question. Relationships are bound to disintegrate where one party feels superior. Mm -hmm. In direct relation, okay, with the title. Relationships are bound to disintegrate where one party feels superior. End of quote. Using examples from a doll's house justify this statement. A very simple question. 20 marks, around 400 words, okay? Give all these examples. We have several relationships. We have Nora and Torvald. We have Mrs. Linde and Krogstad. We have Nora and her children. Nora and Mrs. Linde, okay? Nora and her father. Discuss them all and always go back to the first meaning about the title and what it stands for and what Nora concludes at the end. I'm going to repeat that question. Relationships are bound to disintegrate where, where one party feels superior. Relationships are bound to disintegrate where one party feels superior. Using examples from a doll's house justify this statement, okay? Now, our next lesson is going to be on tone, setting, structure, okay? Tone, how do they talk to one another? What's the voice they use? How, what's the magnitude, okay? Do they sound angry? Can we depict emotions from that, okay? And then we have the setting. The setting, it's just the same as the introduction that we did yesterday. The only difference is that it's going to be a little bit deeper and we have the structure that has been structured into Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. Act 1 is about this, Act 2 is about this, Act 3 is about this. So I'm going to round up everything that we have discussed from the beginning. Yesterday it was the introduction. Today it has been about the order. We have said he was born in 1828, died in 1906. The genre how do we classify it? We have seen family drama. We have seen modern day tragedy. We have also looked at uh, the second one, which was uh, in a minute. Oh, on a realist drama, which was the third one. Okay. And then apart from that, we have discussed the title. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Muhajil, I would like to share a document. Mm -hmm. And uh, here it is. Mm -hmm. Give me a minute. Uh, 
Ajá, ahí estamos al llevo. Ok, so I will send the document and uh, you'll have a look at it later on. The document um, that I'm um, to send, it's um, an extract, okay? So every week we'll, I'll be sending an extract to you guys on a doll's house and also blossoms. Today I sent a doll's house. The same extract was looked at by the phone phones and um, they did really good, so I'd like you to do better than them. And um, in this extract, you're supposed to at least have this uh, novel, A Doll's House. I want you to try your best, okay? And um, tell me, place the extract in its immediate context. What do I mean? What happened before, exactly before, and what happened afterwards, okay? Then look at the other questions that, that are appearing afterwards and have, an, uh, have a look at them. If you find them difficult, I would like you to at least, okay, uh, ask your friend or Mrs. Minor on uh, what they mean or what they were, um, how they should be answered. Now, if you are unable, look for Mrs. Minor and she'll be in a position to help you, okay? Now, I'm not the host, so it looks like I'll not be Asking a few questions, I will still go back to the book and uh, finish, touch on a few things so that um, you can I, ask. Yes. Yeah, you can still ask questions. I will coordinate from here. I will unmute any person willing to answer. Okay. Because uh, I plan on the last five minutes asking as many questions as possible to see whether the lesson was effective. Okay. And uh, I want the learners to ask what they do not understand. So anyone with a question, it is your time to ask the question. Yes, Abdul Basid. Abdul Basid. Yes, teacher. <clears throat> Ask the question. In, in the exams, when they are examining about a doll's house, mm -hmm. they normally ask about the other, Robert Gibson. <laughs> Henry Gibson, I mean. Henry Gibson. That question has never come, but it might come when you are sitting for the KCNC. So you better know. Okay, thank you. Okay, another question. Mm -hmm. Raise up your hands from the, the, the computer. Don't do this. Okay. Teacher, I huh? have a question. Okay, mm -hmm. Rueda. How is that? Zamzam. Zamzam, uh huh. Yes, teacher. I saw a question that say, uh -huh. discuss the Muppets in Doc's house. What that does mean? Sorry, sorry, I don't know. Discuss the Muppets in Doc's house. Mo? I didn't. More fits. What that? More I don't know. Yeah. M -O -F -I -T -S. <laughs> Spell the word for me. M. O. Mm -hmm. F. Mm -hmm. I T S. Wow, this is something that I will have to research on. Yeah, it's a completely new word. So discuss the more fits in doll's house in adults house okay i will get back to you in the next lesson on that but sounds like challenges yeah yes mr mohadi mm -hmm.